Amen. Well, as they were playing, it's beginning to rain. I was thinking about, you know, they say that rain is coming. And that's all right. We need rain. Amen. We need those heavenly showers of blessings. Amen. And not really just in a earthly or physical sense, but we want the heavenly blessings <laughs> uh, of revival, of renewing of, of our, our spirit. Um, that, is, that is key. Uh, tonight, don't worry, we're not, we're not in Romans. We're in John for our devotional thought. But I've still been living in the world of Romans because this is the down week. The, uh, the class that we taught, there was a kind of a, a lead-up week where the kids had a week to get their collateral reading in and, and uh, on all of that stuff. And then we spent a week in the classroom, and then they actually have a little over a week in this case to... Uh, to get their uh, research paper done, <laughs> exciting stuff, and then uh, their final exam. And so there's some assignments, and, and there was it was such a jam-packed week uh, last week that I could hardly stay ahead of them with all of the notes. And so uh, several days this week I've been slogging through trying to get a, a, a study guide completed uh, for them for their, for their final exam. And, and I tell you what, Today and even last night, we were, last night particularly, we were in Romans chapter 12. And, and Brother Evans, my heart was blessed. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. And we may have to preach about that because that's a good message leading into revival. Really, that thought of renewal is something that is continually happening happening it doesn't it's not that we can just sit back and grow old and stale so to speak but there's a uh, that continual infilling that is necessary needed and and really even taught scripturally think about all the times in the book of acts when you know the church was in a time of crisis and they were facing a need and so they went to prayer and the holy spirit came and and uh, and shook the place and and you know did they get sanctified all over again no it wasn't that uh, but the Holy Spirit was testifying to them that the consecration that they had made was still up to date and it was complete and he was giving them that witness and that testimony and they needed that renewing. <laughs> uh, life has its challenges and tests and battles and that will drain the soul and spirit if we will allow it. But thank God we can come into this place and that's what we do Sundays and even Wednesdays and we experience spiritual renewal and uh, that would bless my heart. Amen. I'm glad he is able to do just that. All right. As we begin our service tonight, I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for those who are tuning in online. We appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, there were a number who reached out to me this evening and to my wife. Uh, things are happening I know Brother Stroud this evening is at a funeral of a friend. I understand the Candleberry Seniors are as well, uh, and there are some who are away. Uh, Brother Daniel Jr., and I think some of the Bubs crew is uh, in Chicago this week working, and, and others are in other places and busy. There's so much happening, I understand. But you know, again, God is still working and moving. I, it, I'm slow getting started this morning, this evening, it seems like, but I was just thinking of, of the fact that, that God is still working and moving this week. I had the privilege uh, yesterday uh, to go up to UBC where I was to speak in their chapel service. And as we entered in uh, to the time for service, uh, there was actually already a student at the altar just seeking for God's help and presence in that service. And you know, we had a tremendous service. It was one of those good services, no preaching. <laughs> uh, Brother Buckler did give me a, a little bit of time to exhort there in the end and in, in conclusion, and, and, uh, and so we were happy to do that. But God very clearly and very definitively came and met with us, and it was just, again, such a, a privilege to be in that atmosphere and presence. Amen. God is still working today. So we're expecting his help and presence in this service tonight. And so, really, if you are can, if you're able, I would invite you to stand with me this evening, and we are going to open this service with a word of prayer. 
Brother Jerry Lashley, do you think you could lead us in prayer at the beginning of the service tonight? Thank you, dear Lord. Privilege you've been in this service. Yes. Pray that you'll meet with us. And call yes, us down Jesus. these aisles and speak to the hearts, we pray. Do it, Father. Give them the praise and the glory in the blessed name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. All right. Some of our others that are not here tonight, Brother Weatherall said he got off work late. He messaged me and, and he was going to be here, but probably late. And so I, I messaged uh, Brother Beverly and asked him, was he going to be here tonight? And they were out of town uh, today and just on their way back. And so they're not here this evening. And, uh, and I don't see the Freemans. And so all my song leaders... And so I, I mentioned something to my wife because I had a, rem, a memory that, you know, she's about the fifth one, you know, down. <laughs> so I was trying to hint, and she says, well, I know somebody that used to lead the singing, you. <laughs> and I said, well, I guess I can do that. However, I want you to help me this evening. So this will be a time, since I didn't choose them in advance, that we will take your request. So you think about it. If there's a course you would like to sing, uh, this evening, or perhaps a hymn, uh, you look at that while we begin by singing the course they were playing, it's beginning to rain. Amen. We want God's blessing upon us tonight. It's beginning to rain, hear the voice of the Father say, sons and your daughters if you're thirsty and dry look up to the sky it's beginning to rain it's beginning to rain hear the voice of the father saying whoso sons and your daughters. If you're thirsty and dry, look up to the sky. It's beginning to rain. One hundred and eleven. That's in the hymnal. Yes, one hundred and eleven in the hymnal. Amen. My wonderful Lord. I have found a deep peace that I never had known. And the joy this world could not afford. Since I yielded control. Soul to my wonderful, wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my angels and seraphs sin heaven adored. I bow at thy shrine, my Savior.
angels and seraphs in heaven adored. I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. All the talents I have, I have laid at thy feet. Thy approval shall be my reward. Me, my store, great or small, I surrender it all to my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Wonderful Lord, my wonderful Lord, my angels and seraphs in heaven adored. I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Thou art fairer to me than the fairest of earth. Thou omnipotent and seraphs in heaven adored. I bow at thy shrine, my Savior divine, my wonderful, wonderful Lord. Amen. I can tell that I'm out of practice leading the singing, <laughs> but it doesn't change the reality, amen, that we sang about tonight. He is our wonderful Lord, amen. Someone else this evening, song, chorus, something you would like to sing. All right, let's sing that chorus, the Lord has been so very good to me. God has been so very good to me. He's been so faithful continually. He loves me, forgives me, and he meets all my needs. God has been so very good to me.
469. Amen. All right. I will serve thee. again. Four hundred and twenty-two. All right. Amen. Glad we got something to shout about. <laughs> Jesus found me when a fall. from the throne above gave me peace that passeth understanding joy unspeakable and full of love praise the Lord my soul is filled with glory praise the Lord I love to tell the story of his grace that justifies me freely and I'm shouting glory till I get home. Through his word he taught me full salvation, how his blood could cleanse and sanctify. Then by faith I plunged into the fountain. Now I'm looking for my home. filled with glory praise the lord i love to tell the 
story of his grace that sanctifies me wholly and I'm shouting glory till I can Trials many will be set my pathway, and temptation I shall surely meet. But my Savior promised grace to help me till I lay my trophies at his feet. Praise the Lord, my soul was filled with glory. Praise the I love to tell the story of his grace that keeps and gives me victory and I'm shouting glory till I get we gotta do this one more time praise the Lord my soul is filled with glory the Lord I love to tell the story of his grace that justifies me freely, that sanctifies me wholly, that keeps and gives me victory, and I'm shouting glory till I can home. Amen. I thought enough of you would remember to do that and that you would help me out. Amen. We can't sing it without putting all three of them in there at the same time. Amen. I don't, my voice isn't what it used to be, but it used to go up on the end, too. <laughs> Amen. All right. Someone else yet? We got time for maybe one more. Victory in Jesus. I'm not sure the number. Three fifty two. All right, let's sing it. Amen. Amen. I heard an old, old story how the Savior came from glory. Save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior. I 
heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angels singing and the old redemption story and some Some of those good old songs are still worth singing. <laughs> Amen. They still rouse the spirit, touch the heart. Amen. And we thank the Lord for victory tonight. Praise the Lord. Amen. All right. If our all hearts are clear at this part in the service, we are going to go to the Lord in prayer. And as we pray together... Let's do remember our family of the week. Amen. It's making sure that I had the right bulletin. All right, making sure we're updated as possible. Uh, this week, uh, our family of the week was another of our online audience. Uh, someone, I believe, that is not too far from our local area here, maybe even in Indianapolis. And so, again... We appreciate those who tune in from wherever they're at. And if we haven't heard from you in a little while, we encourage you to kind of drop us a note, a line, a comment of some kind, some sort, somehow. That say, says we're still, we're still tuning in, we're still listening. Amen. And we appreciate uh, each one that's out there. Amen. But a number of requests connected to our own church family tonight. Uh, Susanna, can you help me? She mentioned a number of requests before the service. Mary Hughes, special All right. Uh, Mary Hughes would be an online listener from Idaho. So let's remember her in prayer. Uh, yes. So we have um, obviously gotten the news that uh, Esther Cervantes' daughter, Anita, and her husband, uh, they lost their home. Uh, this past week in a house fire and I can just tell you from personal experience that happened to me when I was in I believe either the second grade I think it was the second grade uh, and we lost everything and they're in that condition uh, right now and in fact they're uh, living in I think the Cervantes camper trailer in, in their yard uh, and really hardly have anything and so we're going to make that a, a, a matter of prayer. And then I think that as a church family, uh, we need to talk about uh, ways that we potentially could be a blessing uh, to this family connected to us uh, in their time of loss and need. And so I know that uh, between my wife and some others, there have been some text messages that have gone around, perhaps uh, talking about some of the potential needs and and so we're just going to continue to work on that. So we're not going to announce at this point what's going to happen. Let's just uh, work out those details. But let's just kind of take it upon ourselves that uh, this is a situation, a crisis, a need. And, and we can certainly step in and, and be a help and a blessing uh, to this family. So let's pray for Anita and her husband tonight. Was there something else? All right. Those were the, 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 I think, the most critical ones she mentioned, and there were several things before the service I was trying to wrap my mind around. 
So let's remember these. Let's remember uh, some of the prayer requests that's been on our, our prayer list. I was thinking really um, today, uh, I was talking with Brad earlier and, and his cousin uh, who was in this, this accident. Uh, that is still just a, a very tragic situation. And, and the, uh, the end results of all of that still haven't come totally out. And so let's pray that God would help, uh, and especially in healing. And then, of course, in any, anything that's coming out of that, that the Lord would have his way. And then uh, another situation with, a, uh, I would say, an old friend of Brad's who had a stroke. Not, not an old friend. I meant a, a friend from from long ago. <laughs> We're not trying to say Brad's old or anything, but uh, let's remember him. His name was Dean. Dean. All right, and he has had a stroke, and really, it sounds like the situation could be uh, serious even yet. And so let's let's pray for him, his family, that God would undertake. There are others. Uh, who have been on our prayer list. We continue to pray for Sister Billy Church's family. Uh, this time her, her son, oldest son, Michael, with COVID. And then uh, the others, um, Brother Stratton, uh, his job situation there, uh, really future situation in God's hands. He knows about all of that. And we're still praying for Brittany Satterfield. I had a conversation with... Um, Bev Thacker today, and and things are really going well on on that front. Not that there aren't challenges, as always. She was uh, talking about the situation with her hands and and still struggling to feel, and it makes it more difficult to do some of the things that she's done for so long, writing cards and things. But and so you think about it, you pray for for Bev Thacker tonight. But and and really, Brittany still is not completely out of the woods and clear. But thank the Lord. Uh, he has helped, and he, he has been working, it sounds like, in marvelous ways in their family and lives. And so we want to thank the Lord for that. Uh, so let's do continue to remember them in prayer. Uh, if you think about it, you can pray for Sister Sandy tonight, uh, that the Lord would help her. Amen. He knows what's going on in, in her life and work and all of that, and he's able to just help and be there. And so we pray for her tonight. We pray for others as well. Sanders yes, Brother Sanders, um, they've been coming to church, and yet he is, he is the maintenance person at UBC. And I can, <laughs> I can attest that his job is not an easy one. And this week of all weeks, they're getting ready for their fall festival, the big thing happening on Saturday. And so he is uh, swamped and overloaded. Uh, I was, again, up there yesterday for just a brief time. And, and really, uh, they have been making progress, and the Lord's been helping. There's a, actually a, it's not a brand-new choir bus. I think it's a, a 2015, uh, but a nice bus sitting up there that they've just recently gotten. And so they are hopefully soon, they are thinking hopefully, the next several weeks to be able to get it wrapped and everything and just walk around. It's been a little bit since I've been there, and uh, and God has been helping, and certainly we thank the Lord for that, but that is a, still a lot of work, a, a lot of work, and so let's let's pray for the Sanders tonight. Let's remember these. Thank you, Brother Montgomery. I actually have been in text communication with Pat uh, earlier. Um, I think I think it was since Sunday, maybe since last Wednesday night. But um, she had actually testified to me about getting back right with God again, uh, and and so I responded, "Thank the Lord." God's working and moving and drawing and hearts responding to him, that's certainly praiseworthy. 
uh, but she was requesting prayer that God would help her uh, to continue to do what was right. And so uh, let's remember these requests, thinking of Bonnie back here tonight. She's been dealing with, I believe, AFib, can't keep her heart in the right rhythm and and uh, keeps going out on her, and she's trying to endure until uh, November the 2nd and when she is going to be uh, having a test, maybe receiving some test results and hopeful finding out something uh, that can give her a little relief. When you're all messed up, you're just not right, and it's tiresome. Uh, it wears you out, and so let's, let's do remember her in prayer tonight. Amen. I know there are others. I'm continuing to pray for the in-laws. Thank the Lord. He is home uh, and, and doing well. We appreciate that. But we're still praying for Sister Montgomery. Uh, we're praying for Sister Ziegler. We're praying uh, for um, Sister Lavery, uh, others that have been on our, our prayer list. Some, you know, I was thinking again of some of our online folks. And just because we don't mention their names all the time, doesn't mean we've forgotten about you, but I was thinking about uh, the Smiths in New York here just recently, and uh, and she actually reached out and, and messaged me in response to being in South Dakota last week, and they were praying for us, and we certainly appreciate that so much, but uh, each one of these, the Lord knows where they're at, what they're going through, what they're facing, and uh, he's able, amen, and so in our prayer time tonight, let's pray one for another, and then let's do pray for uh, our, our revival that's upcoming. I've been in communication with the cases this week. Uh, in fact, we've gotten revival flyers made, and hopefully they will be here soon, uh, that we can begin to uh, actually put some of those out. I was able to kind of post something on the, on the church Facebook uh, page. Again, revival's coming, and they're anticipating it as well. And we're believing God to help us. Again, going back to that thought of renewal. Friends, none of us are beyond the need of spiritual renewal. We need God to come and help us do something in us. Amen. Stir our hearts again. And so we're praying and anticipating and believing that to happen. Anything else you would like to mention before we pray together tonight? Remember Albert, my neighbor, uh, he was in the hospital and he uh, wasn't able to walk, <clears throat> and I guess he had rehab, and he's supposed to maybe be on this weekend. He's, and so I, we need to pray for him because he's 90 years old. All right, Sister Williams' neighbor, Albert. Amen. All right. Well, our custom Wednesday evening is to gather around the front and pray for those who can or able to. If not, we understand you can sit right where you're at. You can kneel. Uh, you can even walk and pray. That's all right with me. I like to do that. Uh, but whatever the situation is, let's have a good season of prayer together. I'm not calling on any one person, but let's uh, pray for these requests and this service, and then also that God would continue to help. Whatever he wants in the testimonies that would yet remain and the uh, devotional thought of his word. Amen. May it speak to our hearts and bless us for being here tonight. Amen. Well, Jesus, we do come this evening hour into your presence with thanksgiving. Oh, Lord, into your courts with praise. Lord, we're reminded even in this time and season of the year in which we have begun to see even the harvest, Lord, that you have given us bountiful blessings. And Lord, we would hardly know where to begin to say thank you. But Lord, we never want to fail, Lord, to give you the praise and the honor and the glory that you're deserving of tonight. We thank you, Lord, for salvation. We thank you for the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you that you ever saw fit, to, Lord, to die on that old rugged cross that we might be saved. Lord, we're so thankful, Lord, for your blessed Holy Spirit that will lead and guide us, Lord, into all truth. And we thank you for that tonight. We thank you, oh, that you've not left us alone, but you're continually there being our fortress and ever-present help and 
time of trouble. Lord, you're there for when the battles get tough. And, Lord, there are difficult times in our lives. And, Lord, we thank you for that tonight. We thank you that, Lord, to, before we could even come and make our petition known unto you in this service tonight, that you knew all about our need and you know what's going on. And, Lord, there's some things that, that we don't know tonight, but we're glad that you have all knowledge and all power and all wisdom. And, Lord, you're in control. You're able. You're able to do something about our needs tonight. And so, Lord, we come, Lord, asking you to work and to move, to accomplish your divine will and purpose in every situation. Lord, we don't always know what your will is, but again, Lord, we're praying that you would fulfill that. Lord, and lead us in, in that direction into thy truth. Lord, for those with physical needs tonight, Lord, we're praying that the hand of the great physician will be upon them. Lord, we know that there are a number who are still dealing with sickness, and we're praying, dear God, that you would touch them tonight. Oh, God, those on our prayer list who have been battling, you know them by name, and you know the things they faced, but yet you're able, and we pray your will would be done, and yet we know tonight there are some of our folks who are away, they're ministering, Lord, in the funeral services and settings and visitations, dear God, and there are those who are hurting and grieving tonight, and we continue to pray Lord, that you would pour the balm of heaven where the hurt has been. You know the pain tonight. And, Lord, you're able to continue to help our people. We think of Brother Darrell especially tonight. And yet others connected to us who in recent days have experienced loss of life and loved one. And, Lord, we're praying that you would again be with them in this time. We, Lord, know we know there are others going through difficult situations, uh, facing just the general cares of life. Uh, Lord, we thought about Rosie's request for her keys and, Lord, a car that is important to her, and yet she's uh, not been able to find this week. Uh, Lord, we're praying that you would give guidance and direction and that might be discovered uh, and be restored to its rightful place. Uh, oh, God, we pray not only for this situation but others. We Think of Brother Stratton, Lord, of the job situation tonight. Or we think of Sister Sandy, Lord, and we pray that you would minister to her. And, Lord, this time also of need, and we pray to God that she would work. We know that there are other situations. Lord, we pray to God for each of these as well. Oh, you know that there's been a, the serious accident, Lord, uh, with this young man. Lord, we pray, dear God, that you would, uh, Lord, continue to work and help in that recovery and yet all the other implications as well. You're able to bring things out the way that they should be. Or may the truth be, be completely revealed. And we ask, dear God, oh, that you would have divine right of way, Lord, not in all of our lives. You see the situation that... Uh, at UBC and the work that's gone into preparing for this weekend. And Lord, we're praying for the Brother Sanders and his family there. And Lord, we know that there are others, multiple requests. And Lord, we put these matters in your hands tonight. And Lord, you know where our online friends are tonight. And Lord, wherever they're at, wherever they're tuning in. Lord, I pray that you would bless them tonight in a special way. May they sense the divine power and presence of an almighty God, Lord, that bridges the distance, that crosses the miles, that ministers to their heart and lets them know that they are your child. Lord, even in our upcoming services, we're praying for our revival effort. Lord, would you keep your hand of protection upon the cases as they travel or they're coming Lord, out of another revival meeting this way, and we're praying that you would, Lord, renew and recharge them also. And yet, Lord, they do not bring revival. It is something that happens, Lord, as we humble ourselves, as we seek your face, and we pray to God, Lord, that there would be that spirit and sense of humility and unity among the brethren and openness to the moving of God in our ranks, whatever you have for us, Lord. We're here to draw closer to you. And we're so thankful for the promises of God that if we'll draw nigh to you, you 
we'll draw nigh to us as well. Lord, we thank you for all of that. And tonight, Lord, even in the remaining part of this service, we pray that your will be done. Oh, God, whatever happens, the testimony of, of the saints, Lord, the reading of thy word, may it bless and may it encourage and inspire. And may we be drawn closer to you, we pray. Lord, in all of these things, we'll thank you and praise you, for we love you. Keep your hand upon each one. Tonight, our Wednesday evening offering is for the Union Bible College and fitting again. Uh, they have uh, a fall festival event coming up this weekend and then really right around the corner, several weeks out, a little later in October, they have their World Changers event. And uh, after our chapel service yesterday, Brother Buckler and I went out for lunch and we just sat down and, and talked about a number of things and, and really their desire is to be a help and a blessing to our local churches. And uh, we appreciate that so much. And, and they have expressed and want me to express to our folks how grateful uh, that they are for uh, your faithfulness down through the years. Uh, you've stood by Union Bible College and supported them uh, in a major way. And, uh, and we're doing our best to see that continue I know we've given money recently for uh, Fall Festival, for World Changers, um, another avenue that I would like to see us develop uh, in the days ahead um, is giving to work towards what they call their Succeed program. And this program is something that happens really at the end of the school year. You know, these students particularly that have put their time in or are getting ready to graduate uh, there are scholarships available, and every year things are given, and a number of the scholarships that are given out are, have specific requirements. There will be some ministerial scholarships go to the ministerial uh, men or boys, or uh, I said men or boys, I meant to say men or women, uh, and so there are some mission scholarship. There's some that have, you know, particular uh, criteria. Uh, and yet UBC has, has endeavored to create this Succeed program uh, that is a little broader base and a way of helping uh, these students, particularly those that have financial needs of being able to get their school bill paid for uh, at the end of the year. And, and thank the Lord that over the last number of years, the success rate in getting students to graduation when their bills paid has gone up greatly and in large part because of the Succeed program. And so I know that that is something that once it gets going, uh, then it, you can begin to build that and kind of invest toward the future. Uh, but it would be wonderful, I think, for our church to be able to, to do something like even along the lines of a $1,500 Succeed scholarship, something that would go to help a, you know, a needy student, uh, help them to get over the finish line at the end of the year. And so I'm just kind of put stuff like that out there and say there's good reasons to give in the offering for Union Bible College. Amen. And we want to keep those out there in front of you. Amen. And thank you again so much for your giving. We trust the Lord will bless again in this offering tonight. All right. It seems like we've got a whole crew of young people in the sound booth tonight. And so my offering takers might be down a little bit. So who's willing to help me with the offering tonight? All right, I've got one hand back there. I've got two hands up here. I need one more. Silas is not quite ready. All right. All right. All right, Price children. I need one of you to help me out. I'm going to volunteer you. <laughs> when my... When my dad wanted me to do something, I, I was voluntold, he said. I was voluntold. So thank you, Rosie, for your willingness. Amen. We appreciate our children. All right. Jesus, thank you for your blessings again. And, Lord, you see the intent of this offering. 
Lord, Union Bible College and how it has uh, been such a big part of the kingdom of God, especially here in central Indiana. Lord, we thank you for the support of the church down through those years, and we ask that you would continue to bless, Lord, as monies are given to advance the kingdom of God. In Jesus' name, amen. giving this evening. Thank you, musicians, for that good offertory. I'm glad I have decided to follow Jesus. Amen. And I don't know, I suspect that some of you have decided that too. So maybe somebody wants to tell us about it tonight. Actually, tonight, uh, the world behind me, the cross in front of me, no yes. turning back. Yes. I'm following through with Jesus. I love him so much tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Good. Good. I saw Brother Tim just about sitting on go right there. Amen. I appreciate that willingness to say something for Jesus. Amen. Somebody else, though. Amen. I'm glad that it's something that is determined and decided for me as well. I'm so thankful for who he is and what he's done in our lives. I'm thankful for the help that he gives. And I just want to love him and serve him better. I want to please him more and do everything that I can for him. Amen. Amen. Thank you for the help that the Lord gives me day by day. The traveling mercies, his hand of protection upon me, just about and about. More than anything else, I'm thankful for the desire I have. Serve him to live. Yes. I love you with all my heart. Amen. Amen. It doesn't really bother me when you're quiet. That just means that you're a reflective bunch. You're you're meditating, thinking about it. That's all right. Amen. We want to give you an opportunity to tell about though some of those meditations. <laughs> Privilege of being here tonight. I thank him for answered prayers. I was talking to somebody recently and just telling some stories about some ways that God had answered prayer in the past. And I thought that's just, it's so good to reflect back and think about the times that he's just never failed. He's always come through. And I'm just so thankful that he's still alive and well today and still on the throne. And I just love him and I'm so thankful that I can turn to him for anything. Yes. Good. Good. I was thinking the other day on when I was a teenager, I reached a point in my life that I thought about it. I think it took me a couple of weeks, but I really, really had this like a crossroad situation. And I really was trying to decide whether I was going to serve God or not. You know, I, I remember the point when I decided that I was going to serve God. It didn't matter if my friends or my family or my sisters or anybody followed God. I was going to. Right. You know, it didn't matter what happened in my life. I, I, that was one thing I wanted to be sure about. And I love the Lord. I haven't regretted that. And I want to keep serving him. Amen. Amen. Oh, you'll never regret it. Never. Amen. Songwriter said, I've made my choice forever. 
Hallelujah. It's just that settled tonight. Amen. Tonight for how he has helped in my family. I mentioned a few weeks ago about my brother having that stroke when he was in Alaska. and We couldn't understand it, but it was a wake-up call for him. And um, he'd been away from the Lord, and he did some serious thinking. And I just thank the Lord that he's now uh, gotten saved. Amen. And he, the Lord just works in mysterious ways. And, Amen. and then my other brother, his defibrillator, quit, wasn't working right, and he had to go back to Erie and thank the Lord that when they shocked his heart, it, it's all working right now. So I want to give him praise for how he works in um, our families, and, and it's an encouragement to us to keep holding on. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen, sister. Tonight, for what the Lord means to me, I was finishing the book of Luke today and reading the crucifixion story, and every time I read that, I sometimes just really think, what an awful price he paid just for someone like me. And I thought today as I read, I stopped and just asked myself the question, if I had been there, whose side would I have been on? Where, what would I have chosen? Would I have chosen to release Barabbas? <coughs> would I have chosen to serve Christ? What would my choice have been? There was a time when my choice would have been to select Barabbas. But thank God he came and changed my heart and changed my life. And today I choose Jesus with all yes. of my heart and everything that may lie ahead of me, whatever that may be. I know that I can stake my life on the fact that he saves, he sanctifies, he keeps and he's going to take me home, and I love him tonight. Amen. We are staking our lives on it. That very truth. Amen. But I'm glad he is a faithful guide. Amen. Well, I want to thank the Lord for how he has helped me and he walks with us and he talks with us and we are not alone on this journey. I'm so thankful that we have a God that we can communicate with, that we know that he's there. We know he has time to listen to us. And uh, in the mornings I like to write down the scriptures that he shows me because things don't stick in my head as well anymore. And I find if I just take the time, the scriptures that jump out at me that I, I feel like he's given me, just take the time to write them. It helps me to reflect longer, and then I have a record. I can go back and have the record. The Lord met with me that look at the scriptures He gave me the other day, or yesterday, yes. or whatever. And uh, this afternoon, I had just a welling of anxiety, which we do sometimes as humans. You know, it's like the ebb and flow of the tide. But sometimes you do ponder the things that bother you and the, the burdens and things and so I was just you know kind of overwhelmed all of a sudden and and I thought no now Lord what's the scripture for this afternoon and uh, the scripture that he gave me for this afternoon is and let the peace of God rule in your hearts to which you were called in one body and be thankful Colossians 3:15. <coughs> And then after that, I just started seeing a, a flood of everything about peace. You know, the, how the Lord blesses his people with peace. The peace that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds. And there's, but this particular scripture stood out to me because it says, let the peace of God rule in your hearts and be thankful. And I realized I needed to shift my focus on what I was thinking of and start thinking purposefully on purpose not of the things that I was concerning myself overly concerning myself but the things that I could, had to be thankful for which are many the bountiful blessings daily and as I began to even the warm breeze coming through the window 
It was just as soon as I switched to purposely being thankful, then it was the peace would come in. And I am so thankful for that peace. Yes. Where would we be without the Lord, the peace, and the songs that he brings? I just want to praise him. mentioned earlier, I remember going to church for the first time. Um, some of you that have grown up in church you maybe don't remember, but um, best I can tell, my dad's the first Christian in our family, and uh, I remember walking to church the first time, and uh, he'd been saved quite a while, and we didn't go to church yet because we didn't know what it was, but he was, you know, reading his Bible and praying at home, and it changed and everything, and so... Um, but the Lord was always faithful, and uh, um, not only did you know my mom and dad get saved, but then uh, several years later my grandmother did, and then my grandfather did about about a month before he died, and then I even remember seeing my great grandparents in church, um, and we, nobody had gone to church you know up until my dad started going, and then. Um, uh, you know, God is faithful, and I'm thankful, most of all, that my children, all my boys, all my grand, all my daughter-in-laws, my grandkids, all serve the Lord. And so, you know, just from one person finding that, finding the truth, and, and honestly not knowing anything about church. Okay, just what they were reading, what my dad was reading in the Bible, and uh, went backwards and forwards, you know, from that. And I'm I'm thankful for that. I want to praise the Lord for it. Good, good. I want to praise the Lord today that He helps us. He helps me every day to handle it. And even though I don't know what's going to happen next, he does. Good, good. I appreciate these testimonies. Amen. Maybe someone else needs to testify. I thank the Lord for what he means to me. I'm glad for his help day by day. I was working on a problem last night, and it was getting frustrating because I couldn't figure it out. It's the Lord to help, and he did. And I want to be uh, consistent in thanking him when he answers prayer. Amen. Yes. Amen. Good, good. Brother Stewart. I'm assuming 90 years old. Look back across the years, where I was, and where God's brought me to. Unworthy, never have been worthy, but I love Him tonight, with all my heart. All I desire is to make it in time. Yes. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Good, good. All right, all hearts clear. Amen. How God is working in my life. Um, it's, it's, I just really appreciate his peace and his presence that he gives to me day by day. Um, in the midst of the busyness, it's such, such a refreshing to feel his presence. And he's been opening doors for me, and I just really appreciate his leading and guiding. And I love him with all my prayers. my best for just a few moments tonight. I'll try my best. <laughs> John chapter 16. John chapter 16. A fairly familiar portion of scripture. And I have been thinking a lot lately uh, about, of course, the Holy Spirit 
uh, what he does, his role in the life of a believer, uh, what he accomplishes. And, and tonight, just I felt this, this passage really stick out to me. John chapter 16, uh, verses 12 through 15. And again, Jesus is in the midst of telling his disciples that he's got to go away. Because if he doesn't go away, the comforter can't come. And in verse 12, he says, I have yet many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. Howbeit when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and will show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father hath are mine, therefore said I, that he shall take of mine, and shall show it unto you. Tonight, I'm trying to keep this within a, even a ten minute window if I can. I just wanted to talk to us briefly about the guiding spirit, the guiding spirit. I, I have read a tale of uh, a couple of hikers wanting to uh, make an ascent on one of the more dangerous peaks in the winter over, I think, somewhere in the area of the Swiss Alps. And, and they did not have a lot of familiarity uh, with this or this region or this mountain. And so they were looking to, to hire a guide to take them on this, this hike. And so they were in a, a remote mountain village and they found a man and they asked if he would be willing to guide them. And he said, yes, he says, but you're going to have to do exactly what I say and when I say. In fact, we'll leave when I say. And, and he wanted to leave in the middle of the night. And so they thought, well, this is a little strange, but uh, he's the guide, and so we're going to follow the guide. And, and so they went out and started this, this trek up into the mountains and actually across some ridges to get to the place where they were going to ascend. And, uh, and they had started early in the dark. They couldn't see anything. And after hiking, of course, for hours, and finally the sun comes up and they begin to look around and, and the rugged area of wilderness that they were in. And as they looked, they saw this treacherous region. And they said, we can't imagine having to cross over that and he says but but you did I said what are you talking about he says that's what we came over in the dark and they were amazed why why would you have us to to do that in the dark he says I didn't want you being distracted by the dangers around you and I knew that if you did exactly what I told you to do that you would be safe and they were. All they had to do was follow the guide. I'm glad for our guide tonight. Our guide is given to us, really, one, in consideration of our own limitations. And, and we have them, right? We're simply human. I was thinking about Sister Price's testimony tonight about uh, not being able to remember some of those things later unless you write them down and, oh, Oh, sister, can I tell you, I'm right there. And I've gotten to the place that sometimes my mind doesn't even always want to think clearly when I'm thinking about something difficult. And can I just tell you, Romans theology is difficult. And so I was trying to think about that sometimes this week and, and put notes down that were meaningful and pertinent, you know, for the students. And, and after, you know, racking my brain around that for a little bit, I just felt like I was in a mental fog and I had to just step away to kind of clear things up because, in a sense, there, there's limitations there. And, and Paul understands some of those limitations come even from 
a, a lack of knowledge or understandings. There's the reality we can even be spiritual infants. Remember, he, he said to the, uh, one of the churches, he says, you're yet carnal, you're spiritual babes. You, know, you need milk and, and not meat. And, and that wasn't necessarily a condemnation of them. It would have been for them to stay at that point. But this is the very reason that we were given a guide in consideration of our limitations, whether it be as spiritual infants or maybe mental obstructions or maybe even human weakness. And there's the reality uh, that that's true. When we are sanctified, it's not that we become perfect in body or even our mental capacity or understanding or knowledge. We're not glorified. None of that happens. We are still human. We're still frail. We need help and instruction and direction. And you know what? God says, I'm not going to leave you alone, but I'm going to give you a guide. He was given in consideration of our limitations. He was given really for the completion of our instruction. Jesus told his disciples, I've got a lot of things that I would like to tell you, but you can't even bear them all right now. And so the Holy Spirit was going to be the one who would come along and along and guide us into all truth. There were things that we didn't really understand, that the disciples didn't understand about Christ as Messiah and Redeemer and personal friend. And yet the Holy Spirit comes and walks beside us and, and will Show us these things. And friends, can I just tell you what a privilege it is to learn the depth of a spirit-led walk with God. To have that sense that he is giving us light, that he is giving us understanding, that he's giving us the things and the help that we need and we then can just walk with him. And this is what he does. He completes our instructions and really, sometimes those instructions might mean that we need to make course corrections along the way. But you know what? I'm glad for that too. Another scripture says, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, or he corrects. He doesn't just let us go our own way and fall into error, but he is there to complete our instruction. And then really, I said I would move quickly tonight, the Holy Spirit is given to confirm our direction. I don't know about you, but my heart's desire and prayer tonight is that, that I be in complete harmony with God's nature and God's truth. That's my desire and prayer. In fact, I think it's part of what Paul prays for in Romans when he talks about being made partakers of the divine nature. Actually, I don't think that's Paul. I think that's Peter being made partakers of the divine nature. And God will help us to bring us into the right direction where we are in complete harmony with God's nature and God's truth. And friends, that knowledge and that understanding, that direction always comes from God. And he says here, it will always glorify Jesus. Friends, God's not ever going to lead us in a different direction. He's not ever going to give us instructions that go contrary to his known, revealed will to us. It will always be in harmony with God's word. We don't have to worry about that, but it will confirm our direction. And then ultimately it will always take us closer to holiness of heart and ultimately God if we follow the guide. I'm just glad for the guide tonight. I want to follow him. I believe not only will he lead us into all truth. Another passage of scripture talks about guiding us with his eye, uh, but he will be that intimate, close connection. After all, this is the dispensation of the Holy Ghost, and he is here for the believer. He is here for the church, and his one purpose is to help us get from where we are to where God is. The only question is, will we follow the guide? Amen. There's an element there, as you know, kind of a, you know, go back to that opening illustration of complete trust, trusting what he says, obedience, doing what he says. God help us to make that yielded consecration to him and then obey. 
And when we do, friends, I believe with all my heart, that's what Paul intends when he says to walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. That is the Spirit-filled walk. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, tonight the question, will you follow the guide? We've been given one. Hallelujah. Amen. I did real good tonight. I did real good. Not as good as Brother Cantleberry did last week, I understand. I heard you had a 45-minute prayer meeting, but that he forgot prayer. <laughs> so, amen. No, I'm picking on him. I appreciate Brother Cantleberry covering for us. Amen. But it's good to be back home. Amen. God's still helping us here, friends. Let's follow him. Stand with me this evening. Some of you have fussed at me a little bit, said, Brother Hobelman, don't you worry about taking time. I don't. I don't really. But I do, particularly on Wednesday nights. I want to be mindful of our congregation. I know a number of you have worked hard today. You're weary. Amen. So we are doing our best to be mindful of you. Uh, let's continue to be mindful of God. Jesus, thank you for your faithfulness to us tonight. We're so glad that you did not leave us alone, but you've given us the guide, the blessed Holy Spirit. And Father, our desire, our will, our life is in your hands. We, we want to serve you. We want to follow you. Lord, we want to be that closely connected part of you. Lord, that the Spirit gives. May we live that life, a Spirit-filled life. May we walk that walk. And Father, may we have that fruit also. Bless our people, we pray tonight. Go with us as we leave this place. Bring us back on the weekend and our Sunday services to worship you. And Father, if you could just see fit to break into our midst somehow, some way, Lord, we want you to do it. Shake us up. We want to be renewed. We want to be stirred. Lord, we want to be drawn closer to you. And we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night from Calvary Bible Wesleyan Church. The Lord bless you.